Now that we have our project set up, we can create our first building. To do this, make sure that the modeling menu in the top of the left is selected. Here we go. Maya uses this menu to divide between its core tool sets of modeling, rigging, animation, FX, and rendering. Selecting any of these options changes the menu items, which gives access to the tool sets for each of these workflows. On the polygon shelf in our modeling menu, so we've selected the modeling menu and oh, here we go, polygons. Let's create a cube by pressing on the polygon cube icon. And there we go. We can also do this by going create polygon primitives cube. And this little square box here is similar to the Cinema 4D gear icon beside any menu option. In as much as if we press it, we can see extra options for our tool. It's worth noting that in Maya, there are many more of these options than there are in Cinema. We can rotate around our cube by using a left click and the command key. There we go. Zoom is right click and the alt key. Remember, this is on a Mac. And to pan, we're going to use the alt key again, but this time we're using the middle mouse button. So we can see why having a middle mouse button is very useful. It is easy to add subdivisions to an object once it has been created. In our attribute editor on the left hand side of our screen, go to polycube one. And here we see subdivisions width one. So let's increase that height. Let's increase that and depth. Let's increase that. Oh, and to zoom in a bit on our object, let's use the F key. There we go. As you can see, though, there are five tabs in the attribute editor for this one object. This is a bit more confusing than Cinema 4D. We have two here for the materials and three for the geometry. We'll go into this in a bit more detail later, but there is an easier way to visualize the scene and that is using the outliner. I've got it hidden away in the side here and in 2017 release, we have a dedicated outliner button here. While the outliner is very similar to the object list in Cinema 4D, it isn't exactly the same. The outliner is worth getting to know, however, and we will be throughout the course of this tutorial. But as we can see, we can see our PCube 1 object sitting there happily in its blue in the outliner, and we're ready to go. With the cube selected, let's set up the geometry we need by selecting the Polycube 1 tab again in our attribute editor, and set the width and the depth to 1.5, and the height to 2. Set the subdivisions width to 5, height to 8, and depth to 5. And let's just press the F key, there we go, to zoom back out again. Like Cinema 4D, an object is live and can be deselected and reselected and have its subdivision modified until its history is deleted, but we'll look at that later. The cube object needs to be moved so that the base of the cube is sitting on the work plane base. To do this, make sure that the cube is selected and press the W key which brings up our move tool. And it's also active on the left hand side of our screen here. To make sure that the object snaps correctly, switch on the snap to grids magnet, which is up here. And let's move the cube up one on the Y axis. There we go, click and F to zoom, there we go. The other thing that needs to be adjusted before we start detailing the object is the pivot point of the P cube object. There are a couple of ways to adjust the pivot point in Maya. The quickest way is to press the D key, which I'm pressing now which gives instant access to the pivot when we can see this by the small yellow dot in the center there. To get more control, double click on the move tool and out pop your tool settings. At this point, everything is starting to get in the way a bit. Just like in Cinema 4D, we can dock our palettes. So if I bring that, there we go, or to the side, there we go. We've got our tool settings and our outliner all on one side, and we're still retaining quite a lot of our viewport space. But to minimize these, just double click on any of the tabs and it pops them in and out. With the tool settings palette open, we can press on the edit pivot button here. This allows full control of the position and orientation of the pivot point. We can also see the transform constraints and the step step. These I find are handier to access than the ones in Cinema 4D. It is worth noting that the same methodology for the tool settings work for rotation, which is the E key, where I normally have step snap set to 15 degrees, and scale is the R key. To move the pivot point to the exact bottom center 
point we can use the D key, which we already have. If it's tricky to see the center of the grid, we can switch ourselves into wireframe view by using four. So I press the D key and we've got a grid snap snapped. So there we go. And we are now down in the center. We can now start to do some basic modeling of the polycube. I want to add a small ledge to the top of the cube for which I will need Maya's modeling tools. Switch the view back to a solid view by pressing the five key on the keyboard. Let's orientate ourselves back up with our object selected. Unlike Cinema 4D, a procedural object like this cube doesn't need to be converted to a polygon object for editing. To select the polygons on the top of the cube, select the cube and right click. This brings up the selection menu, which has a selection of shortcuts. We need face, which is the equivalent of polygon. As the mouse rolls over the cube, we can see Maya is making pre-selections. To select the center top polygon, left click and the pre-selection turns green. To grow the selection, press shift and the arrow key above the full stop key. And now we have all the top polygons selected. We can extrude by either using the edit mesh extrude, which is here, or my preferred method is to press the cube and hammer icon, which is up here. And this brings us into the modeling toolkit. This brings up a palette of commonly used modeling tools and selection modes. As we can see, we are in face selection. Switch off the grid snap up here and press the extrude button. And this will pop up a small menu as well as make a live extrude on our chosen polygons. Each of the options can be adjusted by highlighting the title and clicking and click with the mouse, but that's obviously slightly extreme. What I need to begin with though is to adjust the offset to around 0.12. So I'm just going to go in here and enter this new numerically. There we go. And you can see our polygons have shifted in. Let's perform another extrude just by pressing the extrude button again. Now that I have that extrude applied, I'm going to just pull up on the Y on my extrude tool. And then press extrude again to create some thickness. And this time I'm going to create an offset of 0 0.05. Let's switch on our snap to points, which is here. I can also tell by looking down here what each tool is, which is handy, especially if you're like me, new to Maya. So we've got snap to point selected. And now I'm going to pull this down. Oh, what did I do? I forgot to press the extrude button. So press the extrude button again, and now I can pull it down and snap to that point there on the top corner. Now that we have completed the basic modeling of the house, we can apply textures. To create a basic material, there are a couple of methods that we can use. I have found the most straightforward method is to use the right click menu again. But first of all, I'm going to drop us back into object mode, which selects a whole object and right click and assign new material. This pops up a window titled Assign New Material PCube 1. To cut down the myriad options, select the Maya Surface menu, which is here. There we go. For the basic material we need for the building, select a Lambert, which is this one. This is a simple material with no specular options, which is exactly what we need. One of the legacy ways of accessing materials on Maya involves switching back to the attribute er editor. A range of new tabs have been added, which if we move along here, we can see here's our Lambert 2 material. While we're here though, let's rename this to building under 01 underscore base underscore Lambert. We can also see all the attributes here of our material, which include not only color and transparency, we can also adjust other attributes for the material, such as controlling the matte opacity. Just for now, let's change the color to a tan color. So click here and just move it slightly there. And we can see the materials updating in our viewport. Just add a bit more orange to give it. That's great. As a quick aside, most of the new, these new tabs that we can see in the attribute editor deal with the extrudes that we added and are best seen in the channel box. And here we can see poly extrude face one, two, three, and four. All of these panels on the left hand side can be accessed from the same icon set as the model builder up in the top left. So that is our tool settings. That is our attribute editor. That is our modeling toolkit. And that is our channel box. So back to our channel box. 
With our inputs, which are our extrudes that we did earlier, they work from the oldest at the bottom to the newest at the top. If you want to adjust any of these parameters, you can by selecting the attribute and changing it by inputting a new value numerically. So for example, we've chosen poly extrude phase two, and here we can see all the various attributes. So if we wanted to adjust our translate, which was here, we can select on the channel box here and then use our middle mouse to move it up and down. But I'm happy with it the way it is. Ooh, control, there we go. However, though, there are far too many tabs. Let's switch back on our attribute editor and let's get rid of these tabs. We do this by going to the edit menu and going edit, delete by type, delete by history. The only downside is that this is like converting a live object to a polygon object in Cinema 4D and you won't be able to get any of that extrude information back again. The object is now as it is. All we need to do now is add the windows to the building object. To do this, we will first of all switch on symmetry mode by selecting the modeling toolkit and choosing the symmetry dropdown. And this is a true symmetry, unlike the symmetry object in Cinema 4D. As we can see, we've got a lot of very nice symmetry objects uh, choices and world choices, and including the topology mode as well. But for now, object X is fine. Instead of using the right click menu for selection, let's use the modeling toolkit. We can either choose to select the multi component up here, which can select vertex or edges or faces. We can see them highlighted as we move around or just select the face icon. And by keeping shift selected, we can quickly choose the faces we want to be windows with our symmetry options. With all the window faces now selected, let's right click and assign a new material. This time we're going to create a Fong material. So again, in the surface menu, which has specular options. This time we're not going to bother with going to the attribute editor. Open the outliner and in the display menu, but make sure that assigned materials is selected as I have it here. This allows us to spin down and see the materials that are assigned to our P cube one object. This is new to my 2017 and does make the outliner a lot more useful and much more similar to the object list in Cinema 4D. Let's rename in the outliner our Fong one material that we just created to small building, oh, excuse my typing, small building, underscore windows underscore fong. There we go. And as you can see, that's updated in the attribute editor. And I'm just going to change the color to a pale blue. There we go. And as you can see, it's updating in the viewport. The new assigned materials option does make viewing object properties in the outliner much more like Cinema 4D. Be mindful that the outliner only displays the icon of a material rather than a live preview of an updated material. So any color changes, for example, are only seen in the properties palette of a material when it is selected. So here we see the blue and here we see the brown.